Good morning, everybody. I always worry when they show these photos that I'll be wearing the same necktie as I am for the speech. Fortunately, uh, fortunately, I chose a different one today. But it is really great to be here. Thank you. Um, thank you, President Twee, for your warm introduction. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Um, let me also add my sincere thanks uh, to Fulbright University of Vietnam, uh, to the team that you lead for, for really, as you described, taking FUV from a dream to reality, from FETP to what it is today and what it will be in the future. Um, I think we all owe you a debt of gratitude for the work you do and the work you'll do in the future to contribute uh, not just to Vietnam but to the U.S.-Vietnam relationship. Um, I would also like to thank you, President Thuy, for the great work you do with our Consulate General. Um, we, really, uh, we really also owe you a debt of gratitude for everything you do um, to ensure that the relationship between the Consulate General and FUV and more broadly um, Vietnam and the United States thrives and continues to grow into the future. And um, without your help and perseverance, we wouldn't be here today. So thank you for working with us to ensure that this conference uh, is taking place. Um, I would also like to thank the speakers, panelists, and guests who are here. Um, so many great friends of the U.S.-Vietnam relationship. Ambassador Ving, I see in the audience. Um, thank you, sir. I know you'll be on the next panel. Um, but it really is uh, important uh, to have the conversation we're going to have today. As uh, many of you know, we had originally planned to have this in 2020 as part of our 25th anniversary celebration of normalization between the United States and Vietnam. Um, as we heard from President Thuy, of course, COVID got in the way, as it did for many other things over the last two years. But uh, we didn't give up. FUV didn't give up. And um, I think it's really... Uh, it's kind of a characteristic of our two countries' relationship, right? We just, we never give up, we keep pushing forward, we persevere, and in the end we succeed. And I think if you look over the last 27 years, really this is the story of our two ties. Um, we've persevered, we've, we've pushed forward, and we really do have a lot to celebrate in this extraordinary, extraordinary bilateral relationship. And, and we, we, we succeeded because we've, we've worked together because our, our predecessors have set aside their differences, um, we've acknowledged our shared history, and we've worked together to face the legacies of war and the impact that it's had on our, our peoples, which is an absolutely critical step and one where we've made uh, incredible progress. And on that firm foundation, we've now moved far beyond those initial areas of cooperation. And today, um, our nations are trusted partners with a friendship anchored in mutual trust and mutual respect. Um, but getting here wasn't easy. It didn't just happen. This was the result of hard work by countless Americans and Vietnamese who didn't give up, uh, who persevered, uh, because they believed, they were committed to, the idea that we could learn from the past and move beyond it, even as we honor the past. And as the U.S. Ambassador to Vietnam, I am committed to continuing to address the legacies of war through programs and partnerships that survey and clear unexploded mines and ordnance so that land can be returned to agricultural use or be used for new schools and playgrounds. Um, I'm committed to continued effort to account for soldiers killed and missing from both sides, the United States and Vietnam. I'm committed to continue our efforts to remediate dioxin and to assist persons with disabilities. And our two governments are working together to highlight our collaboration and our progress in these areas through a new, soon to be open exhibit that will be located at the Ho Chi Minh City War Remnants Museum. It's a very exciting uh, development, which I, I look forward to, to be able to see in person, um, hopefully within the next uh, year or so. Now, 25 years ago, on June 28, 1997, uh, then Secretary of State Madeleine Albright visited Vietnam. And she was the first Secretary of State to visit Vietnam since 1975. And one of the reasons she came to Ho Chi Minh City was to lay the first bricks of what was become the Consulate General here, uh, in fact, just down the street. And of course, it was in 1995 that Bill Clinton announced the normalization of U.S. diplomatic relations with Vietnam 
an event we're commemorating today, this 27th anniversary. Vietnam and the United States, our two peoples, made the bold choice to create a path toward the expansive and constructive relationship that we enjoy today. And so by laying that brick, symbolically, Secretary Albright ushered in a new chapter in the friendship and partnership between the United States and Vietnam. Back in 1995, our two countries had nearly zero trade and very, very few people-to-people -people connections. Fast forward to today, our trade amounts to over $113 billion. U.S. businesses, as you all know, are investing more and more here in Vietnam, while Vietnamese producers, of course, selling more and more to American consumers in the U.S. And in fact, Vietnamese companies uh, are investing in the United States, which is exciting development. Um, equally impressive and comparable to the growth of our trade and investment ties has been the growth in our uh, two countries' people-to-people -people ties, which in my view really d does form the, the, the bedrock of our two countries' relationship. Uh, approximately 30,000 uh, young Vietnamese study uh, in, the, in the United States at all levels, from high school to, to grad school to postdoc programs. And in fact, in Southeast Asia, no country sends more students to the United States than does Vietnam. In fact, Vietnam currently constitutes the sixth largest uh, sender of foreign students to the U.S. Um, behind giants like India, China, South Korea. So really, really significant that Vietnam occupies such a, a, a top position in the number of foreign students to the U.S. Of course, the world-class education that Vietnamese students receive at American institutions helps to bolster Vietnam's competitiveness worldwide, as well as contributes to Vietnam's thriving and increasingly innovative economy. Uh, of course, Vietnamese students also have the opportunity to get a U.S. quality, world quality education right here in Ho Chi Minh City at Fulbright University of Vietnam, which is the first independent, not-for-profit, U.S.-affiliated university here. And for that, uh, we are very, very proud to be affiliated with this great school. Now, as we write the next chapter of our two countries' relationship, we're focused on the kind of future we want to see. The United States and Vietnam, for example, continue to stand with one another as we work to address a range of challenges in the Mekong region, throughout ASEAN, and in the Indo-Pacific writ large, including issues as diverse as regional security, the climate crisis, clean energy, wildlife and drug trafficking, transnational crime, and global health security. Just this past June, our Deputy Secretary of State, Wendy Sherman, uh, was here in Ho Chi Minh City. In fact, she visited FUV, uh, where she spoke and observed just how much unites the United States and Vietnam. We both have creative, energetic, and entrepreneurial people. We both care about tackling the challenges of our time. We both respect each other's political systems. We both want to see a strong, independent, and prosperous Vietnam, and we both want to see an Indo-Pacific that is free and open and resilient. Now, we saw just how important and effective our two countries' strong ties were when we were hit hard by the pandemic. And now at the height of COVID-19, we stood together as friends, and we were there for each other. And we owe a real debt of gratitude to the government and people of Vietnam for generously providing the United States with much needed uh, masks and personal protective equipment, um, which really, uh, in our time of need back in the spring, summer of 2020, saved countless US lives. And in turn, when, when Vietnam needed it, we were there to help. Um, and we're very proud of the fact that we were able to provide close to 40 million, 40 million uh, vaccine doses as well as $13 million worth of technical assistance and medical equipment. And we believe um, that by helping Vietnam get through this pandemic, uh, we, we, we were able to pave the way for a safe reopening of, of critical uh, business and other operations that were key to Vietnam's economic recovery as well as the recovery of, of global supply chains. 
And this momentum in our two countries' relationship has also been accelerated by the commitment our two countries have shown to, um, in spite of the challenges, uh, to continue to meet together face to face. Um, so for example, we were very, very honored that uh, Vietnam welcomed Vice President Kamala Harris last year, uh, as well as our Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin. And as I said, we had Wendy Sherman here not too long ago, um, Special Envoy for uh, Climate, uh, John Kerry, as well, was here in February. In fact, he spoke at FUV, which was a really cool event. In fact, he was on the video just now. Um, and of course, going the other direction, we were really proud and honored to have uh, Prime Minister Han Mingqing uh, visit Washington, Boston, New York, and San Francisco, um, which was really uh, an extraordinary event to have any leader of any country go overseas for one whole week as Prime Minister Qing did to the United States, I think really signified um, the strong commitment um, that the government of Vietnam has to our two countries' relationship. And we're, we were very grateful for that. Now last year at the East Asian Summit, President Joe Biden articulated his vision for an open, connected, prosperous, resilient, and secure Indo-Pacific region. And President Biden went on to, to affirm that the United States is ready to work together with our partners here, including Vietnam, to achieve this vision. And during her own visit to Hanoi last year, Kamala Harris aptly pointed out that history has shown and will continue to show that the Indo-Pacific plays a central role in global affairs and is a key region for American security and American prosperity. So our work today, the work of the Biden-Harris administration, and our emphasis on the Indo-Pacific build upon the efforts of multiple U.S. presidents, uh, multiple U.S. administrations, all of whom saw the vital role of the partnership between the U.S. and the countries of the Indo-Pacific, as well as, in particular, the, the role of the relationship between the United States and Vietnam. So that we're standing here today celebrating 27 years of normalized relations between the U.S. and Vietnam is proof that we are not doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past. We have the ability to overcome our past and to build trust, respect, and cooperation and become key and close partners. And as much as that achievement matters to us, it is also a really important and timely lesson for others around the world. So in closing, as we celebrate our partnership this year, let us renew our commitment to work together and to ensure a bright future filled with peace and prosperity for both our peoples, for the American and Vietnamese peoples. Our future is linked. Your success is our success, and our success is your success. The same is true for your prosperity and our prosperity. Because as we know, as friends and as partners, we prosper and succeed together. So thank you very much, and I hope for a successful conference today.